Welcome to my masterclass on Nelterrence Lair in Dragonflight Mythic Plus Season 2 and I'll be covering everything you need to know in order to ace both Tyrannical and Fortified Keys, making sure that you are very confident in whatever you're doing in the dungeon. When the Keystone starts, you'll be taking down this like water slide and you'll land in the water and you will see a puff in front of you and you know lots of mobs in front of you and traditionally in MDIs if you watch this dungeon back in Legion because in Legion it is when Mythic Plus was first introduced everyone would pull the entire room, the entire first area, and basically, um, you know, kind of pop cooldowns. But I'm not sure if that's the meta in Dragonflight Mythic Plus because of the new affixes and whatnot. But I'll keep you guys posted on the routing. In this video, I want to focus on what does the mobs do exactly. So let's kind of pull some of the mobs and I'll kind of talk about them one by one. And they die kind of fast, even on a 17 fortified. Uh, but you can see that I chain it all the way to these, uh, you know, lurkers here, right? And you can see they are colored differently and there's a reason for it. So let's kind of talk about what they do. So the first mob that you see um, over here that's very common is the crawlers. And the thing about these crawlers is as they die, they will drop an acid puddle, a green puddle on the ground that you need to move out of. So you can take note of what's happening here. And I have the sanguine affix, so you can't see it directly, but you can see this greenish kind of like AOE. When the sanguine puddles despawn, by the way, you'll be able to see them. But you can see some faint outline of the greenish puddles here. Make sure you move out of them. The scorpion always targets a tank with, you know, basically tank damage, right? So nothing too much to worry about. The lurkers is what you want to be careful about. Now the lurkers, I colored them as light blue. If you guys watch my Plater profile release for season two, you understand that anything light blue means it's a frontal. Exactly what they're doing right here is a frontal. It's called Visit Bow. And what these lurkers like to do is when you first engage them, I'm rewinding the footage here. When you first engage them, they will teleport to a random player and they will attempt to do a frontal, right? So you can see that the lurkers are standing here and then randomly they just decided to port away from where they were standing over here to one of us and they will start winding up for a frontal viscous bow or viscid bow. And you can see they're basically vomiting in this direction. So what you want to do as a DPS or healer is you want to stack close to the tank so that these bows wouldn't, or rather these worms, they wouldn't teleport to Narnia, right? Because you want to AoE and you want to cleave down. Everyone has cooldowns at this point in time, at the start of the dungeon. You don't want them to be like out of cleave range. So stay close, don't play in Narnia. Just make sure that when the lurkers appear, watch where they're facing and avoid the frontals. Uh, for the visit bell and you'll be entirely okay. So that's all you need to be you know, careful about regarding the lurkers. Um, I'm just going to forward the footage here because we're just killing the lurkers here. And you can see they're teleporting again, right? So just be careful. And we put the gnashes here. Uh, the gnashes basically has an interrupt uh, that you need to do. But later on, I think I'll put another gnash and you guys will see what's happening. This pack here in MDIs in Legion, everyone pulled these packs all the way to the end. So basically the pull that I just did, including the Hulk, all the way to the end. That's what they did in the MDIs. But I'm not sure if that is, again, the meta that people do in Dragonflight. I'm showing you this route where I pull the Hulk, just so you understand what the mob does. I suspect, and I'll show you another POV, the better way might be to skip this pack by hugging left here on this rock and heading down the waterfall and dropping down to the next spots. But let's pull the Hulk and I'll explain what it does, right? This pack is kind of dangerous. The Hulk really frags. I think if there's one dangerous mob in the dungeon to a tank, it's this Hulk over here. You can see he does something called a fracture and he is marked light blue because he does a frontal. You can see he's winding up for piercing shard. This is the exact same piercing shard in uh, basically Azir Vaults. Meanwhile, there's like tons of crawlers on me. Uh, you can see piercing shard goes out. I pop big cooldowns. I have guardians running. And it does two piercing shot, by the way, right now, which I think is not something you would expect in Azir Vault. So just make sure like you pop massive cooldowns. Um, this guy is no joke. This piercing shot is no joke and it would easily wreck your party. Um, it has another buddy called the Vow Shot Chunk and he does something called Crush. Naturally, don't be in this big AOE of like, I think 10 yards when he does Crush, just move out of it. And melee DPS, ranged DPS, and healers, make sure you're never in front of the Hulk because you don't ever want to get piercing shot. The thing is pretty insane. Um, on a 17 fortified, we are skilled to 410 on the PTR. And even then, like, it hurts. All right, by the way, you guys can see these uh, green acid puddles. Those are left by those tiny mobs we talked about at the start of the dungeon. Those are the Vow Shard crawlers, right? When they die, they basically drop this acid puddle, just move out of them. Um, anyway, we kill the chunk here. And I chose to basically... Um, you know, go down this waterfall area. I think we put the Nasher by accident. But let me switch footage real quick because I want to show you that you can actually skirt 
and skip the Hulk if you really want it. Anyway, switching footage here, this is a 16 fortified, but you can see what I'm doing here is I'm pulling the um, little tiny ads with the Nash in the water. And the rationale is that I want to skip the Hulk. And I'm showing you that it's actually possible to skip the Hulk by jumping into the water and eventually uh, hugging left. You, you can pull the drudges here. And these drudges, they don't do anything. These mobs, these three mobs, they don't do anything. They just melee the tank, right? Easy mobs, but um, you can basically skip them if you hug the waterfall here to the left and you jump off. And, and by the way, someone died because he hit a rock or something. Like I think he died on a rock by hitting the rock maybe, or um, or he jumped too far and landed on the, on the ground. But if you jump into the water, you should be fine. And this is where you start pulling the first boss. Um, and I'll stay on this POV and we'll swap back to our initial plus 17 for the trash. When you drop down over here, Rock Morris RP would start. There's some conversation that will happen with the NPCs. What people like to do is they normally send one healer down early to start the RP while others are still fighting on top. Like that's one way uh, to kind of start the RP and save a bit of time. The other thing to note is when you drop down here and the RP starts, you can start pulling all these neutral mobs to build resources. So you pull resources so that you have uh, damage on burst, right? And I think most people will actually save uh, Bloodlust for Rockmora. Right now, as per the tuning for Rockmora, he absolutely chunks, even on four to five weeks. So um, just be very wary about the fact that you probably want cooldowns running into the first boss Rockmora. He is an absolute beast in Legion and even now, okay? So there's a couple of things that you need to be very careful about about Rockmora. It's a very simple boss. But if you don't execute it well, it is disastrous. So the first most important thing you need to know about Rockmora is it will spawn ads. And it is absolutely critical that everyone swaps to ads. You can see the first ability he does is he does crystalline ground. And any form of boss mods will tell you while you're in this ground, don't move. Because as you move, you take damage while you're standing in this like sparkly ground, right? It will despawn later, but Basically, when it's active, don't move. On top of that, you will keep spawning these things called the skitter. Make sure you blow up the skitter ASAP because there's a mechanic link to it later. And if the skitters are alive, bad news bears. You can see when the skitter dies, you see this greenish cloud of bad. Yep, you don't ever want to stand in that greenish cloud of bad. Um, and you can see skitters are spawning again, right? More skitter spawn and we kill every single skitter. As a tank, I try to taunt the skitter so they are melee range so we can cleave. And the boss is about to do the most deadly ability amongst all bosses in this dungeon, I feel. And it's called Shatter. Shatter does immense AoE damage that is increased if any ads are alive. So he does Shatter and the ads will basically explode if the ads are still alive for more damage. You can see there's a Skitter alive here, right? See what happens when the channel for Shatter finishes. Shatter finishes, the ad disappears, right? It disappears out of thin there because the boss basically, you know, one shot the ad. Um, you can see I even had to sack the chamois here just to be safe. And take note, this is only a 16. I tried it on higher keystones. If you have ads up during shatter, you are in for trouble. Um, on top of that, the boss would always periodically do something called razor shards. This is something that is a tank frontal. You can see as I pan the camera here, he does a tank frontal, right? So. Make sure that everyone is stacked near the middle of the room. I always start the boss towards the sides and I kind of rotate the boss along the sides as the room gets filled with these green puddles from the Skitterers. You can see when the Skitterers die, right? Again, green puddles are formed. So I try to keep the green puddles, uh, the green puddles to the side of the room so that the rest of the party can basically stack in the middle of the room. And you can see again, Shatter is coming through. I am very worried about the party. I'm making sure that, you know, I save some heals so I can heal them. Um, and you want to make sure that you have a defensive up for every shatter. And likewise, again, make sure you kill all the tiny ants. The tiny ants needs to die and just move out of the green puddles every time the tiny ants die. So if you can achieve this, actually, like, we make it seem easy. But Rockmora, trust me, when we were doing PTR, uh, I tested this in many groups. You know, we struggle on this boss, uh, especially on higher keys. This guy... It's going to be tricky on tyrannical keys. That's my gut feel, and they might need to tune it a little. But just take note of, you know, the golden rules. Kill the ads. After ads die, move out the puddles. Do not stand in front of the tank because it's a frontal. And on every shatter, make sure you have a healing cooldown or some form of defensive cooldown. And when he does crystalline ground, do not move. After the boss, you can see what happened here is we took the barrel, right? You see some barrels um, 
here, right? You click on the shiny barrels and you'll start floating down the river stream. Uh, there's nothing much to do here, it's just RP, right? So you float down the river stream and you'll land down on this next area. So on Legion, uh, I think everyone did the same route as well. Everyone hung right and we skirted to the right. There's a drama mob here that I'll explain um, in a bit what it does. But also this is a good time to swap back footage to the 17 because I want to show you trash on the 17 to let you have a sense of how much damage it actually does. And some of the abilities here, they absolutely wreck. All right, so this is the 17, right? Same thing, we land here and we're hugging right. You can see I pulled the pelters and don't worry, we'll talk about the drama later. I pulled the pelter and I pulled the breaker and even these two mobs itself is already dangerous enough. Let me explain, okay? So the pelter is the number one public enemy in Nelteran Slayer. This guy does this super annoying thing like the hunter mobs in Halls of Valor. They would disengage backwards and they would throw like range stuff from range, melee attacks. And this guy absolutely chunks because the aggro table is random. You can see what he does, right? Um, and I'll talk about the breaker as he does something. So anyway, um, you can see the pelter jumps away, right? And at this point in time, it starts doing jagged disc. But take your eyes off the pelter for now. Look at this breaker. This breaker is doing something called avalanche. And naturally, um, if you followed my plater video, you know that this is basically mobs that are doing a frontal, right? Like blue. And when he channels avalanche, it's a frontal, but on top of a frontal, there's a trick to it. You can see frontal goes out on the tank. And by the way, as a tank, if you're fast enough, you can sidestep that. I've realized that and I'll show you later in this video. But if you're melee, don't ever be in front of the breaker. That's the point. Every time he does avalanche, the game would spawn rocks that fall from the ceiling on everyone in the party. So let's say I was standing here, right? Where my mouse cursor currently is on avalanche. There'll be a rock puddle that, or rather a rock that falls from the ceiling onto this very spot. So you need to always be moving, right? That's how like um, the rock almost died there. Every time there's an avalanche, basically you need to move. Um, and you can see this pelter, all it does is, I just rewind a little here. All it does is it just throws jagged disc at people. Random aggro table. And on fortified, high fortified, this thing absolutely hurts. So just note this breaker again. I'm very careful to pull the second breaker because I think this is new mechanic to everyone, right? I'm not sure if everyone knew what avalanche does. But um, normally I think you can chain multiple breakers. Just be very, okay, so avalanche is here. You can see that I dodged uh, to the side as a tank, right? So he went out, you can see the falling rocks and everyone again, everyone took damage. You can avoid the damage if you simply just move away from your original spot when Avalanche gets casted. And I think um, they will pick up on that um, in a bit. But anyway, here's where you see the first drama mob. There's a Nasher, a Hunter, and a Drama. So let's talk about them. So remember earlier the Nashers that were pulled at the start, they didn't seem to cast anything and I marked them as pink. You might be wondering why. Well, in this pool you'll see why. Because the Hunter mob exists, the Nasher actually gains an ability that is a cast that can be interrupted. So let's see what happens, right? We'll play it in chronological order. You can see the moment the drama reaches the war drum here, it attempted to cast something, war drums, and we stunned it. If you let the drama channel war drums, he's gonna summon more ads. So no matter what, by hook or by crook, you stun and CC the drama. Don't ever let this channel go off, right? Kill the drama, right? So we stunned it, right? We use multiple stuff. You can see the hunter does something called stone shatter here. So take note of what happens after Stone Shatter finishes its channel, right? You can see after Stone Shatter goes out, it does this like AOE, right? And it basically does like moderate damage to people in its vicinity. Nothing too alarming, but I think on higher keys just pop something maybe. And as we proceed on here, I think you'll start to see the Nasher cast something. Yep, so see this. The Nasher basically casts Stone Gaze and why? You can see this Hunter emo thing, Nasher gonna turn you into rubble. And this is because when the hunter is around, it does some form of kill command um, to the Nasher. And it triggers the Nasher to cast Stone Gaze. And this is why at the start of the dungeon, the Nashers didn't cast anything, right? But they're marked as a caster because you gotta interrupt Stone Gaze. If you don't interrupt Stone Gaze, it basically stuns you for quite a few seconds. So make sure you interrupt the Nasher whenever the hunter is around. This is absolutely crucial. I think in Legion, what we also did is we always killed the hunter first. Because if you kill the Nasher before the Hunter, the Hunter will just resummon another Nasher. So just keep in mind, uh, that actually is a thing. So you can see me swapping uh, between the targets here, but essentially um, the most important thing I think is to kill the Hunter first. Anyway, you hit up to this clearing and this is another dangerous pull. Why? Because you have a Breaker and two Pelters. 
Remember, I said the Pelter is the most dangerous because they have a random aggro table and they just chunk with their disc. The problem with this pool is that there's two of them. So they're going to end up disengaging. And I've seen it on PTR testing where I've actually tanked them here and the Pelter disengages into this pack here. And when it disengages into this pack over here, there's a chance it body pulls them and you pull additional stuff that you don't want, right? So I'm turning them around because I don't want them to jump in the direction. The way the Pelters jump is they always jump backwards from where they're facing generally, right? You can see Avalanche comes out, right? The uh, rope was caught in the front door. That's how he died. But at the same time, you can see people taking damage because they, you know, some of them took damage, right? Because they didn't sidestep the rock. So the moment Avalanche goes out, remember, always sidestep, just move around. And you can see this Pelter absolutely wrecking people, random aggro table going on people. I'm holding the breaker away from them because I think people are not used to the frontals of the breaker yet. But once everyone is cool with the frontals, I think you probably want to tank the breaker together with the Pelters. But you can see rocks are going to fall down again, right? And everyone takes damage, right? So make sure like, you always sidestep after the avalanche. If you're constantly moving, you'll be fine. And just to showcase what I mean in another POV is I actually pulled the breakers and the pelters all the way back. And this is also a safer way to ensure like the pelters don't jump to Narnia and basically pull those guys that I mentioned in the corner. Um, also, this group here, they are more savvy around the falling rocks because I told them before the key. So you can see everyone kind of moving and that's how you avoid taking damage from uh, the falling rocks. So I'm pulling up this POV just to tell you that it's possible to dodge the avalanche damage as a party. Just constantly be on the move when avalanche goes out and you'll be fine. But point is, this pool is also done in a way where the pelters don't get a chance to jump backwards and aggro other mobs. So this is something you can do, right? Pull it from range. So anyway, back to our original footage on the plus 17 here. You can see the pelter actually jumps all the way back here, right? To a very dangerous spot. So I made everyone move away from the pelter so it would chase us. And you can see it keeps trying to jump backwards to other mobs. It's very dangerous at this point. So I said, screw it. I'm going to pull the Hulk in, right? So we might as well talk about the next pool here. The Hulk, you guys already know what it does. The Shaper does a cast called the Stone Bolt that you can interrupt, right? It goes on random targets. Make sure you kick it and you interrupt it. By the way, the Shaper also does something called Petrifying Totems. While the Hulk is doing his Piercing Shard, you guys really know what Piercing Shard is, but let's talk about the Totem, right? If you let the cast go through, you can see a Totem will spawn. You can see the Totem spawn there. Uh, you got basically deleted, right? We deleted the Totem. But the Totem will spawn a cloud, like an AoE cloud. And if you stand in the cloud for even like, I, I think a few seconds, you'll get a debuff that basically after 10 seconds, it will petrify you. So you get stunned. Um, so always make sure you move out of the totem. Uh, you can also swap to the totem and kill it. That's the other way. Right. Anyway, Shaper is doing a stone bolt. Uh, we interrupt it again. And that's it, right? I'm going to forward this part. Nothing too much. You can see another piercing shot coming out. Lots of big tank damage. I actually bubbled there, just to be sure. And then you head up to the second boss area. Let me talk about some of the trash here. So this is um, a dangerous area because of the pelters, right? Like I said, the pelters, they jump backwards. And this is kind of a dense area. If you have the pelters jump backwards and pull other mobs, you're in for trouble. So you can see what's happening off the bat. We got the hunter to basically trap the pelter or you can set the pelter. And the reason is I want to kill the patrol first. The patrol, I feel, is dangerous because the patrol moves around and it might aggro other mobs um, if you're not careful when doing it. Um, so I always position it facing outwards and people basically hug left because the Hulk does a frontal like I told you guys, right? Um, and these two mobs you already know, right? One, some of them does a petrifying totem. You can see the totem about to spawn here. We instantly delete the totem. Um, again, if you don't delete the totem, it spawns a red cloud. And if you stand in the cloud, you get petrified, right? Just take note of that. So we kill these. I'm just going to forward a little here. Just note that obviously the Hulk will try and knock you back. So like if you stand here, you get knocked back downwards which is dangerous because the Hulk will chase you and do its piercing shot. And when it's chasing you, some of your allies might be in front of it and they might get piercing shot. Pelter leaps away, does his annoying thing again. Again, we try and stun it, single target stun if possible. Uh, you don't need to pull the Shaper and inside. Uh, here you have a new mob here, the Geode. Uh, the Geode basically just channels Scotch. You can see he basically drops all these like orange swirly puddles, just move out of them, right? And the Shaper again does this totem thing and stone boat. Nothing too significant. Okay, we have a breaker, two pelters. It's dangerous. Uh, why? Again, breaker does frontal. You can see everyone got cleaved by the frontal. Um, and arguably, I guess I could have positioned the boss way earlier um, towards facing away from the party. So that's something that I think as tanks, you need to you know be careful about. Don't be like me. Don't position it in a way where people are confused. You can see, again, avalanche goes out. You know, falling rocks. You can dodge it if you're fast. Uh, Jagged disc keeps throwing on random targets, right? Keeps like AOing 
um, or rather he keeps throwing stuff on any random target. In this case, it's me. Again, I basically sidestep the avalanche um, and I'm trying to cleave down with the pelter. Just gonna forward here. You guys really know what's gonna happen. Um, there's more avalanche coming and then here we pull another breaker and another shaper. So you can see again what's happening here, right? Avalanche goes out, people didn't move. It's like one shot by the rocks. Uh, even though they didn't get hit by the front totem. You see, ah, for a split second there, you can see the totem. You guys see this totem spawning, this petrifying totem from the Shaper? If you let the cast go through, this is how it looks like. This faint red circle, don't go near it. Uh, and basically, we, we killed it instantly there. Um, anyway, um, onto the breaker, the final breaker. And after this, we are done, right? So again, you can see once Avalanche goes out, if you don't move, he basically one-shots you with Falling Rocks. I don't know if Blizzard will add indicators for the falling rocks, but but in Legion we didn't have like falling rock indicators either. So it's a mystery. I don't know. Maybe they'll add it, maybe they won't. Alright, and we pull a crack shaper. And in Legion, there's some shenanigans where you can despawn the boss and pull crocodiles onto this boss. We'll cover it in the one minute and plus tips later. But um he does a few things. The first thing he did earlier was called Sunder. I can just rewind that. Sunder is a tank buster. So just make sure you have some form of mitigation up. And he would then proceed on to do um, Strike of the Mountain. You can see the moment he does Strike of the Mountain, he summons all these hands. You want to move out the hands because the hands will clap you essentially. You can see like, essentially they will move in and clap you, right? Um, and you have a better POV later. Anyway, he summons all these totems. Make sure you swap hard to the totems because the totems, while they're alive, they do like pulsing, dropping, falling rock AOE damage, which is... Um, harder and harder to heal, right? So once the totems are gone, you can see the rocks stop falling from on top. And dust throughout the mountain again, you gotta move fast, right? If you don't move fast, what happens is the hands basically claps you, right? And you can see I got knocked by the hands there, right? You can see the hands clapping people there. So you gotta move fast. And then he does Sunder, um, and he rinses and repeat until he basically does his second transition. I'm just gonna forward until he does his transition over here. Dust throughout the mountain, move fast again, move fast out of uh, the hands, I guess for the hands, I can talk a bit about it, right? So the trick with the hands, right, is that you want to move out in a diagonal fashion. So you do want to move in a way where um, you're moving in the direction of any hands. You want to move diagonally where there's no hands, if that makes sense. Because the hands, if you play it in slow-mo, they clap in a motion where they basically congregate in the middle. Um, so it's just something to take note of. Okay, here, you see the strike of the mountain? Okay, look at the hands here, right? There's some gaps in between the hands. You want to run out in the direction of those gaps because they clap by congregating into the middle, if that makes sense. So I just want to point that out. Anyway, as you work on the boss, eventually he does something called stuns of the mountain where he jumps to the middle of the room and he basically does this RP thing, right? You will never wield the power of Kaskora or whatever, right? And he will basically transit and you can see me hiding my unit uh, frames and all my UI elements. Why? Because I need to basically play switcheroo with the boss. The boss basically submerges and he is now in the middle totem. And there's four other decoy totems here. And you basically need to guess where the hell the boss is. So what I do is I hide all my UI elements. It's control Z as a keybind by default. Um, and you can set it in the keybinds if you guys haven't, but you need to track where this thing is going. So you can see my mouse cursor in game tracking where this totem is going, right? This is the real boss. And he's moving here, he's moving here. You can see I'm tracing it, I'm tracing it, I'm tracing it, and I'm tracing it. Um, and you always, after you've identified which one it is, you mark it as skull as a tank. You can keybind it to skull. Uh, set a keybind to mark target as skull in your keybind settings. Kill the actual rock and the crack shaper will basically emerge from it. And from here on, he rinses and repeats. Same abilities, nothing special. Just gonna forward it for you guys. That's all you need to know about the second boss. Kind of easy. Um, over here, um, you can skip these mobs, right? Uh, but you've seen these mobs, right? The Breaker, the Pelter, and the Shaper. And you can actually skip them by hugging left here. I pulled them, right? But I just want to demo to you that it's possible to skip. So you can see, if you hug left here, you jump over this rock, you can skip them. This is what people did in Legion as well. Uh, but let's stick on this footage because I think it's a better POV uh, for the boss as well. So we have the Lurker, the Grub Master here. And there's a couple of new abilities. Let's talk about it. So... The Shaper you know, the Geode you know, the Lurker we talked about. The Grub Master is new. So the reason why they're called Grub Masters is because they would basically throw um, stuff on the ground that basically is like a transforming Grub. So over here, you can see this new Grub that's being tossed out. Let me point it out to you. You can see this Grub Master just did Worm Call, right? 
and he basically summons this grub. And this grub will then cast Metamorphosis. Meanwhile, the lurker is like teleporting to people doing frontal. So this pack is actually kind of dangerous. And you do not want to let the grub finish Metamorphosis. Uh, we stunned it here, I believe. Yeah, we stopped the Metamorphosis cast. So everything was Gucci. And you can see once you stun the grub out of Metamorphosis, it doesn't recast it. So that's just something to take note of. You can see, um, other than that, like this pack, as long as you dodge the front door of the lurker, you should be a-okay. I'm just gonna forward here, nothing too significant. The grubs um, over here, you can see another one being summoned. We went over and we hodged it, right? Everyone stunned it to make sure it doesn't transform. Um, and once you stun it, you can just ignore it because it doesn't do much. So yeah, lurker teleports. Yep, and you kill it. All right, I found a POV where the grub actually transforms. You can see Metamorphosis finished casting. Grub erupts into a grabber. Now this grabber is really, really, really annoying because he basically spawns this cloud of acid around it and he does something called Bug Tongue. And he will attempt to suck you in like what he did to the rogue here into the cloud. So um, as you can see, like the rogue is literally dying, right? So on top of that, you have the teleporting ad that does the frontal on you. So this pack, Make sure you always stun the grubs that are trying to metamorphosize. Once you kill all the ads, you can pull the Ruxus over here. And you probably want to designate where people are standing. So traditionally in Legion, the tank would stand to one side of the platform and the other people will stand to the other side of the platform. Uh, the boss is immobile. It can't chase you, but I'll talk about what are some of the abilities it does, right? So the first ability it does is basically um, it summons drop bars that leap down from the stands. And these are ads that it summons. Basically in this fight, you should always blow up the ads because if the ads get near the boss, the boss consumes them and basically enrages and it does a lot more damage essentially. So DPS swap fast. It does rancid more, right? And basically it just like drops um, these uh, puddles on people. And this ability is really important. Let me talk about it. So he will target non-tank players with rancid ball. You can see green swirlies, right? And immediately, almost immediately, I think it's like a second, you can see this like stone skeleton pulse being spawned with like green puddles. Now, right now, the green puddles will despawn over time. I don't think it's supposed to despawn over time, by the way. Blizzard needs to fix this. But you can see the skeletons are being left behind, right? Those are slow puddles. And there's two reasons for the slow puddles. The first is you see these ads that he summons, the drop bars that I talked about at the start, right? You want to kill the drop bars before they reach the boss. Because if not, they sacrifice themselves and the boss enrages. As these little ads make their way to the boss, they can be slowed by these puddles. So on a high key, you can actually drop the puddles in the middle of the room here and make sure that the ads are slowed through the puddles so you have more time to DPS them, right? There's another reason for uh, the slow puddles and it's really for the tank. Uh, meanwhile, the boss also does this thing where it basically like random AoEs, like green puddles, right? So you just need to be careful. You can see more stuff, right? It drops those... Uh, um, again, the Rancid more debuff for people. And it spawns those like skeleton slow puddles. Then it does Toxic Ratch, which is all these green swallies that you just need to dodge and move out of. And at this point in time, you just kill ads, rinse and repeat this phase. You can see I'm panning backwards to show you where the chamois is standing, right? So he's basically baiting uh, the puddles to the middle of the room. Um, and that's actually really smart because um, I'm about to show you what you can do um, with the puddles as a tank. So the boss will begin to cast Spike Tongue somewhere throughout the fight. You can see it's casting Spike Tongue. And just before it casts Spike Tongue, you can see it ticking down um, in terms of boss timers here. And you can get ready to run out as a tank because when he casts Spike Tongue, he attempts to pull the tank all the way to the boss, right? So you can see I'm trying to make distance here. And remember we talked about these skeletons that you can use to slow yourself down. Well, if everyone played it correctly and basically dropped their skeletons near the middle of the room, what the tank can do is, you can see I'm purposely getting stuck on these. I'm running against the boss. And I know because there's a lack of a skeleton, another skeleton here, I can't make it in time before Spike Tongue runs out. I quickly bubble before I reach the boss and he, he eats me anyway, right? You can see the moment he eats me, he enrages. So the idea is that you do not want to let the boss eat you if possible, right? You want to use those slow puddles uh, to prevent yourself from being eaten. And um, by the way, if you're being eaten by the boss without a cooldown, you are dead. As a tank, you are 100% dead without a cooldown, but bubble is fine there. That's a trick though. There's a cheese you can do actually. And I'll cover all of these cheese spots in a one minute M plus video, but I'll quickly talk about it here. So here's another POV. You can see that Spike Tongue is coming out in eight seconds, right? And I'm about to run out as a tank. 
You don't want to run out too early, by the way. The tank always needs to be in the melee range. But you can see I turned around here um, and ran for this uh, X. And by the way, as I mentioned earlier, you want to be in melee range, else the boss does like AoE to everyone as a tank. You can see he does spike tongue on me. I'm being lodged and stopped by the X from being pulled into the boss. So there's a cheese you can do here. If you don't want to make use of all these slow skeleton puddles here, you can like run to these eggs and get stuck on the eggs. That's one way. But you can see you need to quickly run back as a, as a tank because if you don't run back in time, the boss will essentially uh, just like keep spewing AOE on everyone. So just be careful. Regardless, when the boss gets low, it does a frenzy anyway. All right, so um, you just need to make sure like you kill ads fast. You can see all the DPS swapping off to ads at the back here, right? Like I didn't pan my camera around for you guys, but just know that the ads will spawn. Um, and melee DPS, like you always swap to ads, always swap to ads, right? Melee DPS, range DPS, swap to ads fast. Um, and eventually you kill the boss. But this part where it frenzies is when it does the most damage. You want to make sure you have big um, cooldowns at this point in time. Um, but we'll stick on this uh, plus 17 POV here. Once you kill the boss, you drop down to the final area. So let's talk about the mobs. The breaker, you already know what it does. It does the avalanche frontal. The demolisher is new. All right, the demolisher will attempt to transform. You can see um, after some time, it will attempt to cast something to transform. And avalanche goes out. Just make sure you dodge falling rocks, right? Nobody dodge falling rocks until people die. Char skin is what it casts, the demolisher. And when it casts char skin, it will transform into this big, like, you know, giant elemental. And then it will do burning hatred, which is a fixate. And naturally, like all fixates, you want to kite away from it. You can stun this guy, by the way. I hodged the char skin uh, to stop the fixate, but just move away from the fixate. You know, naturally, uh, when it fixates, it kind of hurts if it touches you, right? So again, move away from the falling rocks um, on the berserker and you'll be fine. So that's what it does. Um, and then you see a dominator. Let's talk about the dominator here. The dominator, the big scorpion. So this dominator does a few things. You can see it does something called Ember Swipe. And this is a frontal. That's why the mob is marked light blue. This is a frontal. Make sure you don't get hit by frontal. At the same time, you see this dude, this humanoid on top of the scorpion. It basically is um, at random times throwing out like crystal spikes that will damage the party. You can see like those spikes flying out. Let me just rewind here. You see this spike that's flying out to the druid here? You will notice like, again, this, this random spike that goes out, right? It targets non-tank players, and it seems to favor range, by the way. So uh, one thing that you should do is you want to stack up behind the Scorpion and have your healer drop airflow like what he's doing right now. And so you guys can get AoE healed by this random flying thing uh, that the humanoid mob is throwing out at people. Um, but other than that, you know, avoid the front of the Scorpion. Uh, the Scorpion frenzies at um, its final, like I think 10%, 15%. So just be very careful about that. Does a lot more damage during this phase. You can see his claw is glowing. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then you see this new uh, pack here with the Trapper. You guys know what the Breaker does, so I won't talk about it, but let's talk about the Trapper. Um, and they are marked as pink because they actually do a cast that you need to interrupt. On top of that, they do something called Jagged Disc that always targets the tank, right? So earlier on, remember the Pelters? The Pelters would do Jagged Disc at random party members. The Trappers, they throw it on the tank, which is, you know, sizable amount of tank damage, coupled with the Breaker's uh, Avalanche Frontal that the tank needs to dodge here. Ideally, you should have sidestepped that, by the way. And um, you want to kick the cast from the trapper as well. So you can see the trappers, they will attempt to cast something called Bound. And Bound is basically on the tank. And if you don't interrupt them, it stuns the tank for four seconds, bad news bears. So make sure you interrupt the bounds, else, you know, the tank is going to have a hard time. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much all they do, right? So they keep throwing Jagged Disc at the tank and make sure your mitigation's up. Uh, the good news is they don't disengage like the Pelters. So from a positioning perspective, not that annoying. Um, okay, so in Legion, this final area before the boss, people used to skip this trash pack, by the way. You can actually pull the boss separately without pulling the ads. It's possible. But they changed it in Dragonflight, where if you pull the boss without doing the trash, the boss will tag in uh, the trash as well. And I think we tried doing the knock good trick, where if you get a rope to pull the ads and like feign death or like invis and the other party members pull the boss, um, what happens is that the ads still aggro onto the main party. So long story short, I believe in Dragonfly, you actually need to kill the ads now. Um, and you guys know what the ads do, and I won't talk about it. I'll show you what the cause of death is here though. I believe it's a frontal. You can see someone standing on me, right? This guy standing on me. Ember Swipe goes out and the DH dies, right? Because he got clipped by the Scorpion's frontal. Um, but the point is you need to clear all these mobs and you guys already know what it does. So I won't kind of like spend too much time here. 
I'm just going to forward through the footage here, skipping through them, coming over to the other side, killing the other Dominator and um, Trapper as well. All right, now onto the boss. This boss, Dagru, is really easy if everyone knows what they're doing, but it can get messy if you don't. So Dagru in Legion, I'll show you the proper way to do it very shortly, um, and it's basically tanking the boss against a wall. But because of that, the camera angle is very screwed up for a tank, so I can't really show you all the mechanics. So I'll show you a quick POV here, where I'll run you through the abilities without me being like up and close and personal in the boss's face because I'm in the wall. And we'll talk through the abilities first, and we can kind of show you like the proper way people did it in Legion. So when you pull the boss, you can see like this boss has this like aura, right? This like red aura. And it basically just signifies that every time you move the boss, the boss will do damage um, to the party. So just take note of that. All right, the boss will then do something called crystal spikes. And you can see it spawns this swirly on the ground, right? And by the way, you can see the boss again gaining this aura. It's basically called magma breaker from what I remember from Legion. But the crystal spikes will spawn here. And by the way, you can see the spike spawning at the same time the boss does something called Magma Sculptor. And Magma Sculptor is how it summons this ad, this Char skin ad. Sounds familiar? Yup, because it does something called Burning Hatred that fixates. The trick is you want to kite the ad into the pillar. And when the ad touches the pillar, you'll basically get stunned and basically you get to basically destroy it in a much easier fashion. Dagru, from time to time, also does something called Landslide. Uh, which is a basically a tank frontal and it's a very long frontal so you always point it away from your party and it will knock you back as well right this is why you tank it against the wall but again i'm showcasing you the open pov so you understand the mechanics so you can see what's actually going to happen here the ad is about to touch the crystal and when the ad touches the crystal the crystal get destroyed the ads get stunned and you can focus target the ad at the same time dagru will do something called molten crash this is a tank buster on the tank make sure you have heavy mitigations you can see it takes a sizable amount of damage, uh, even if she already righteous up. You can see the uh, the char skin basically gets stunned over here. You can see as he touches the wall, you can see crystal cracked, right? You can see this dazed icon here. When the char skin is stunned, it takes 100% more damage. So this is where you burst the ad down, right? So it basically takes down really fast once it gets stunned upon touching uh, those crystals. This crystal spike then spawns again. And what I didn't mention earlier is that when the boss does lens like this frontal, if you point the frontal on the crystals, it would destroy the crystals. And that is why you always point it away from the party, right? And then he does Molten Crash again, which is Tank Buster. Again, a reminder not to move the boss too much. Um, that's something that in Legion, I think tanks had to be very careful about. Um, and then there's one more mechanic that you need to be very careful about. It rinses and repeats for now, right? But you can see upcoming here, there's this thing called Magma Wave in five seconds, right? And I'm going to slow down the footage here. The boss does Molten Crash, which is again a tank buster. Immediately after the Molten Crash, I know Magma Wave is coming based off my boss timers. And you need to line or sight using the crystals. And watch in slow-mo what happens. The moment Magma Wave ticks down, right? The boss channels Magma Wave. If you're not behind the crystal, just look at how much damage you're taking. So it starts channeling. Look at the damage on the party here. So you need to preemptively be behind the crystals. If not, you are dead. So move fast, right? Um, and after that, he basically spawns a puddle on where he channeled a magma wave and you destroy all the crystals. And the fight just rinses and repeats from here. It's as simple as that. But now let me show you the proper way it was done in Legion. So the moment you engage the boss, you actually pull the boss all the way to this corner here. Why, Why the corner, right? Because it makes it so much simpler that as a tank, you won't get knocked into Narnia with landslide, right? So you have time to prepare for the tank buster and stuff like that. Um, and you can see I'm slowly, slowly like moving the boss so we can get a bit of like cleave action going. But everyone is basically hugging this corner here, right? And after the boss does his molten uh, magma wave, which is coming soon, he does molten crash into magma wave, the AOE. You can see one of the convenient things about doing it at the corner is the boss basically spawns this nice little puddle in the corner. So it basically maximizes space, right? And the reason why we did it in the corner um, in Legion is also because we didn't use to clear the trash in the middle of the room. So uh, depending on what the new meta is, I, I don't know, maybe people prefer tanking the boss uh, in the middle of the room. But the, the idea is that if you tank it against the wall, when the boss like knocks you back with landslide, you don't fly into Narnia because you have the wall to help you, right? So that's just something to take note of. And other than that, you can see when landslide goes on me, I get knocked into the wall, right? So I don't fly to Narnia. So it's as simple as that, really. 
And that's basically everything you need to know about Nalteran's Lair in Dragonflight Mythic Plus Season 2. And I hope this video actually gives you the confidence to time your fortified and tyrannical keys. If you found this video helpful, do subscribe to the channel. More of such guides and tips for Mythic Plus coming your way for Dragonflight on this channel. You don't want to miss them. I also stream on Twitch. Feel free to swing by to hang out. Last but not least, big shout out to my Patreon subscribers for keeping the channels alive. Good luck in your keystones. See you soon.